Welcome to the Minority Business Report, where we talk about local business people who are making things happen in Anne Arundel County. The Minority Business Report was created to bring you information and resources that help small businesses grow and prosper. I am Joanne Jackson, Anne Arundel County Minority Business Enterprise Coordinator. My guests today are Cynthia Morgan, President of the South County Chamber of Commerce, Phil Gerties, Phil and Veronica Gerties and Associates of Crownsville, and Lucia, is that right? Mm -hmm. Flame, Cleaning Made Easy and Deal. We are delighted to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But before we get started, would you tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself, where you are from, and what it is that you do? We'll start with Lucia on the end. Okay, great. Um, my name is Lucia Flame. I was raised in Fort Washington, Maryland. For the last 11 years or so, I've ran my business and lived in Southern Anne Arundel County. Um, I'm a mom, first of all, of a little girl. She's seven and she is my life. Um, both of my parents were born out of the United States. My dad was born and raised in Italy. My mom was born in England. She was raised in the US and I come from a large family, which I think has really helped me in life as far as customer service, dealing with those personalities. Um, it's been really, really great. About 10 years ago, when I was 20 years old, I decided to start my own business, Cleaning Made Easy, and I'm really, really happy with the choice that I've made, and I really look forward to my future. And where'd you go to school? I went to school in Waldorf, Maryland, mm -hmm. Thomas Stone High School. Uh, I, did, I did not go to college. I was kind of looking for a drive and a passion to go to college, and I, cu I couldn't really find that, so I decided to start this company, and as time went on, I found that that was my true drive, helping people. Well, we're glad to have you with us Thank today. Thank you. Phil, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I have uh, been involved with entrepreneurship for about 10 years now, actually a little longer. I started my first business when I was 17. Um, after that, I got a few jobs, but then I went back into the self-employment field. Um, I've been focused on personal development for a little over 10 years, really, really directing my life towards positive thinking and helping other people develop uh, financial freedom and things of that nature. Uh, today, I'm in direct sales. I'm one of the top leaders in my company uh, globally, and I help other people to find financial freedom, more time with family and things of that nature. I do a lot of coaching, uh, motivational speaking and things of that nature. So I very much enjoy life. My wife and I, Victoria, uh, we are, we've been married for almost eight years, been together for a long, long time. And um, we have two children, five-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. And I understand you're also from Anne Arundel County? Yes, I grew up in the Pasadena area, Annapolis area. And uh, I went to Salisbury State University for one semester. I left school, <laughs> and uh, I just I just realized it wasn't for me. It wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I I got heavily into being an entrepreneur. Glad to have you on the show today. Thank you. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Cindy Morgan. Um, married. Been married 35 years. Mm -hmm. My husband and I have three children, and four grandchildren. And we've lived in Southern Anne Arundel County for almost 22 years now. Um, I entered in my profession after being in the uh, banking industry, um, after I received my degree at University of Maryland University College in 2007. I was a latecomer to my industry. Um, I'm the owner, um, partner in the firm of Morgan and Walsh Investments as a financial advisor. My office is located in Laurel. Um, two years ago, the chamber nominated and voted me in as president of the board of directors, but also in my, um, I also am the president, no, I'm also the secretary mm -hmm. of the Southern uh, South County Assistance Network Food Bank. So my hat is wide. I have a lot of different hats I wear. We're also glad to have you on the show today. Thank you. Uh, and my next question is going to be for you, Cynthia. Um, we can get right to the topic of discussion today. What's going on in South County and how are businesses faring these days? South County is very resilient. Um, mm -hmm. Businesses are faring very well. Uh, we have a large portion of our businesses which are 
um, at-home businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a large number of businesses that are um, over 10 employees. So we have a, a range of businesses. Most of them are larger, some of them are smaller. Mm -hmm. We're seeing businesses close up, but we're seeing new businesses coming in and taking the place of those that have left. Um, right now we have an empty dead space across from the chamber and one of our current businesses, um, a dentist, is buying that space and he's renovating it. So he's going to make a new building where there was a decrepit old building. And we're seeing that in the county now. Mm -hmm. um, most of our businesses are in Edgewater. As mm -hmm. you know, the small area plan limits growth mm -hmm. in South County. Right. And that's what keeps our rural nature um, and that laid back feeling we have down there. So Edgewater is the end of the growth. So we have a lot of businesses in Edgewater that mm -hmm. are able to grow. Deeper in South County, in the deal, Tracy's, Shady Side Churchton area. We're limited, we're near the water. Um, we have small strip malls, and we're finding that as one business leaves, new ones come in, a little different, uh, maybe something different, and they're thriving and prospering. And I understand you have a, you have a, a listing of small minority women-owned businesses that we took a look at, and yes. uh, how are they faring? They seem to be faring very well. Mm -hmm. um, we have a women's networking group. Okay. Um, and so the women to get together every month, mm -hmm. um, we bring in guest speakers, and it helps them to strengthen their business. Whether that speaker, it talks about uh, the legal aspects of your business. How do you set it up? Uh, LLC, S Corp, C Corp, mm -hmm. pass through entity. Um, insurance, mm -hmm. um, and so it helps them to, to realize the infrastructure of their business, what needs to be done. They also network with one another, and I, I see them sharing opportunities. One of our business owners, Terry, um, at the Second Wind Consignment, helps nurture other new business owners. Uh, she herself has been in business four years, but she's helped nurture other business women, other women business owners when they develop and begin their businesses. So there's a great deal of sharing and support in our community. Well, that's good to hear. That's great to hear. And Lucia, is that, am I saying that right? Yes. <laughs> We're glad to have uh, you on our show today. Um, to, you took out time from your busy schedule. Um, I was very impressed with what you have accomplished as a young woman in establishing your mark in the business world, and in particular, being such a success in South County. Can you tell us uh, what prompted you to go into your line of business and why you decided to locate your business in Anne Arundel County? Sure. Well, first I wanted to thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm really excited to be here. And it isn't too often that you find somebody that's truly passionate about what they do. And from the moment I met you, I could see that you really cared. And so I appreciate definitely that opportunity. Um, as far as why I started my business and why Anne Arundel County, honestly, I didn't have a really strong drive or passion like what you have for anything in college. I didn't have a field that I really was geared towards or felt pulled towards. Mm -hmm. So I decided to not waste time or money and to start cleaning houses on the side until I found what was inside of me and mm -hmm. the direction that I wanted to go in. As time went on, I realized that I was basically setting up my future for greatness in an entirely different amount. I was helping people. Of course, there were a lot of people that just wanted the service, but I felt that more so there were people that actually needed me. And so at that point in time, um, I became passionate and I created ownership of what I was doing. I decided to start my business. I was 20 years old when I started. I didn't know a lot about what I was doing, but I had an incredible drive. And so I didn't want to give up, and I didn't give up. So 10 years later, we are an incorporated company. Uh, I really feel Anne Arundel County, I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, we are a great community. Where we're at in Anne Arundel County, the community just comes together. We like to buy locally, stay local, and give back to the community. Uh, my company, Cleaning Made Easy, is involved in a lot of local events like the South County Festival, 
um, no time for crime, no bullying with Deal Elementary School. And I feel that being part of the community in Anne Arundel County has been a lot of where my success has come from. Well, that's great to hear. And like I said, I was very impressed with what you've done in this short time frame with your business. Thank you. And um, Phil, part of Lucia's success has been due to your coaching, I understand. Um, what prompted you to go into your current line of business? And what are the things are you doing to help businesses thrive? Well, I decided to get into personal development at about 21 years old. I uh, was living a life that I, I wasn't very happy with. I wasn't content with the direction that my life was going. Mm -hmm. So, uh, funny story, I, I actually said to one of my cousins for one year, it was New Year's Eve, and I said, for one year, I'm going to only do for other people. I'm going to give back in every possible way that I can, uh, to the, from the smallest to the most extreme possible way. Uh, and what I didn't expect happening was my life completely changing throughout that process. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really uh, found direction for myself. So I knew at that point that I wanted to get serious about being an entrepreneur. I knew at that point I wanted to vote, to devote my life to personal development. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to get into real estate at 24 years old. I was a real estate uh, investor at 25. I owned a mortgage company. Um, and then at 26, I got involved with direct sales, which very much took my personal development to another level. Mm -hmm. uh, reason being because in direct sales, I found that everything was about personal development. You know, it's a great, it's, it's great to be able to make money, but Jim Rohn says that the best way to become a millionaire is to first become a millionaire. So you have to mentally be a millionaire. You have to be a millionaire in your heart. You have to think in a way that allows you to keep the money that you earn. A lot of people are really great at making money, but few are good at actually keeping it. So I, I grew, I developed, and uh, I, I found that I, there, there's a lot of different avenues I could go with personal development. So through the direct sales business, I took it very serious. So I was very focused uh, on reaching the top of my company. Uh, but then also I was able to coach people and I, I found that I very much enjoy that. I, I, really be able, I really enjoy being able to sit down with someone and find out what exactly they're looking for, whether it's in business or in life, and just assist them in coaching. Because most people uh, don't realize just exactly what they're capable of doing. But if they have somebody else just kind of guiding mm -hmm. them, they achieve amazing things. So uh, today I'm, I'm actually writing a book uh, focused on the direct sales industry. Um, I am very excited about working with businesses to help them you know, reduce their bottom line, uh, working with businesses in Anne Arundel County to help them increase their dollars and, and really also help the employee mindset. A lot of times people are going to work and they're just working a job. And mm -hmm. I think that if we realize that the more you do, if you really dominated that time at your job, mm -hmm. it, the business would do better and then the owner of the business would be able to give back more to, to their employees. So I, I enjoy that. I enjoy giving back and spending time with people. Um, and I, I, I very much enjoy being an entrepreneur and living a lifestyle that I've gotten the pleasure of, of designing myself. Well, I'm really glad that I met you too, in particular, um, to see young, um, fast-growing businesses in the county. This is something we need to highlight and really need to stay on top of and help you guys be the success that you can be in Anne Arundel County. And thank you again for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, with all that we now know about the evolving economy, um, what do you think are some of the greatest challenges facing small business today? Cynthia, I'll start with you. Um, I know health care reform is something that's affecting businesses on two different levels. Mm -hmm. um, on the group level, um, businesses that have group plans have gotten a buy uh, that will, has been pushed off till next year, 2015. But on the individual level, many business owners like myself um, carry only individual insurance. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing changes in the market, the health insurance market, that's impacting business owners. Um, also, in our county, um, licensing permits is something our county executive is working on right now. Um, the cumbersome nature of obtaining permits in the county is something that I hear from many of my business owners. Fortunately, your county executive is addressing the issue. Uh, it's something that probably didn't happen overnight and it won't right. free up for a while, but we know she's working on it. Also financing. Um, the issues we had with financing 
and the, the impact of the financial markets in 2007, 2008 has severely hurt business owners. Um, most business owners that want to finance their business must use their personal assets. And as we know, the real estate market has dropped. And so the equity that they had in their house that they normally would tap to expand their business is not there anymore or is very little. And banks only want good credit. And mm -hmm. so that has limited the market uh, for business owners for tapping um, for loans. Well, do you also know that the, uh, in addition to the Vote Loan Program, uh, the funds from the casino are helping a lot of small businesses renew their plans to develop? Um, and there's quite a few uh, nonprofit agencies out here that are doing uh, financing for business. So there's a lot of money out here. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, we've got to uh, program small businesses to go after it. Yes, and you've been a wealth of information, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what you do for the county and getting the, out to the small business owners, that letting them know about the VOLT program and the financing that, that falls under that, that cover that we really sometimes never mm -hmm. see when we're looking on our own resources without finding out from the county what's available there. Yeah. So thank you for that. You're quite welcome. Phil, what do you think are some of the uh, uh, biggest problems for small business today? Well, one thing I was going to mention, and you guys touched on it, is the financing. I find that a lot of small business owners, me being uh, being one in the past as well, it, you're so inundated with everything it takes to actually run your small business yeah. and keep your head over water that you don't have time to do that research and really to get that information. So uh, it's great, again, that you're out here and, you, and you're helping people to see what is actually available to them. Um, and I mentioned earlier, you know, the employee mindset. A lot of times it can just be hard to find a great employee. And, mm -hmm. and really today we don't want good employees, we want great employees. Um, so finding people that are as vested or even close to as vested as that business owner to work for them can be tough. And when you find those right people, then you run across paying them because you want to keep them, mm -hmm. right? So it, it really depends on, on how your business is doing and what industry you're in. But ultimately, I find that a lot of small business owners, while they have the right mindset, they're being, they're being put into a box where it, it's hard for them to really expand with the goals that they originally set in, setting their, in creating their business. And what that's doing is it's keeping them stagnant. And, and if they're stagnant, then how is the community going to grow? Um, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners are moving into my field, you know, as a mm -hmm. secondary income. Because mm -hmm. as you mentioned that, you know, going to your home for that, for that additional revenue to expand your business is just not an option right now, for a lot of people at least. And uh, a lot of folks are moving into my industry to generate a secondary income and then put that income towards growing their passion, which was that small business that they have. So, you know, the issues I think are, are both big and small, but there are a lot of solutions out there. It's the job of people like us to really give people the solution and, and, and be the solution for folks. Tell us just a little bit about what that other industry that you're talking about. I'm, I'm speaking about the direct sales industry. Mm -hmm. You know, The direct sales industry yields roughly $32 billion per year in the United States. Uh, and there's a, there, there tends to be a bit of a stigma around the direct sales industry, but when you look at the facts, you know, it's a great way for people in their spare time. For example, when I owned my mortgage company, I got involved with this industry 100% in my spare time because I found that I was working so much in my mortgage company that I, I had built this great lifestyle, but I wasn't enjoying any of it. I was always in my mm -hmm. office. I was always doing things for my mortgage company. So I wanted a way to sustain the lifestyle, but at the same time, I wanted to, to do it from home. I wanted to spend time with my wife. I wanted to start a family. So this industry allows you to, through spare time and part-time activities, which, I mean, small business owners, that's what they have. They have mm -hmm. spare time and part-time. They're not looking for another full-time job. Uh, you're able to help people to save money, uh, at least through my company. You're able to help people to save money, and everybody today wants to save money or needs to save money. But then at the same time, you're able to generate a substantial residual income, and that's one of the keys to wealth, generating a residual income that at some point you can sit back and that money continues to flow in. That's how you're able to help your business to continue to grow because due to the action you, actions you may have done a year ago or two years ago, you have a substantial income still coming in and offsetting any, any uh, deficit you, that you might have with your small business. Well, as people call me, Phil, I'll remember to have them refer them to you um, if Thank they you. have those questions. There's a lot of folks out there looking for alternatives of what they're currently doing. Lucia. 
What do you think are some of the biggest problems for small businesses? I feel that small businesses, both small and large businesses, deal with challenges on a daily basis. However, one of the greatest challenges that I face every day is mostly the fear of the unknown. Fear with the government, taxes, cutbacks, you know, the whole issue with the government shutdown, it didn't just affect government workers, mm -hmm. it also affected many of the small businesses in our area where a lot of our clients, uh, customers put us on hold and I know that they were going through a lot mm -hmm. with just not knowing what the future would hold for them, um, not having that security. Luckily, I'm the type of person that just goes with the flow, pushes harder, mm -hmm. understands I have faith that where I'm going is the right direction. I also feel that a big challenge that we face is balancing quality as well as quantity. You know, as a small business, you want to grow, you want to thrive, but there comes a time where you have to pull back as a business owner and really let your employees work the business. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have that good quality, but you can't be there all the time. And with the way that the economy is right now, a lot of people really want things done their way. They expect more for less, essentially. So as a business owner, my, one of my greatest challenges at this time is really trying to grow my business but still give that same quality as if I was the one doing all the work. And we didn't really talk about you and Phil, um, but you just want to comment a little bit about what Phil has done for you in helping your business grow? Sure. Um, I met Phil a few years ago mm -hmm. um, at a place called CrossFit in Annapolis, also a local business, a great place. And I had been praying for a long time for just a deeper direction. I just felt like there was so much greatness in me. And although the possibilities are endless in a business, I kind of felt that I was plateauing and I needed that jump. So mm -hmm. Phil was put in my life. We worked out together. And through talking, I found out about what he did. And he's given me a lot of tips. Um, one of the biggest things that stuck with me is that I can't enable my employees to keep making the same mistakes again. Of course, he's taught me a lot, but in, as a business owner, you have to be a boss. You have to take mm -hmm. ownership of what you do, and you can't allow your employees to really essentially walk all over you. And I care about <laughs> everybody that comes into my business that's in my space. Yes. I truly want to see them do the best in life. And so I've given a lot of people a lot of chances where I shouldn't really be so flexible. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's taught me to step up and be a true leader. Great, that's good to hear. Um, we all encounter bumps along the road to success, whether it be in business or in our professional careers. Through it all, we sustain a positive outlook, a vision for where we want to be and how to get there. What would you say your vision for the Chamber is in 2014? And that's funny you ask. Um, we're having our strategic planning meeting in November, mm -hmm. so I've been working on that. Um, there are three things we'd like to do. Um, I want to continue developing the infrastructure of the chamber. The chamber is like a business, and you have to have good, strong infrastructure to start with as a core mm -hmm. to any business. A good budget, a good management team, and, and good human resource policies in place. And so we are developing that, again, increasing that development this year. We want to increase membership, which all chambers want to do. Mm -hmm. um, my focus is to increase that membership into the Edgewater area. Edgewater is booming with businesses. Uh, the new Lee Airport field um, shopping complex. Um, there's just uh, numerous businesses that are untapped for us as a chamber that we need to tap into. We've also gone outside into the Calvert County area. Many of the South County residents go over the line into Calvert to shop those that are further down. Mm -hmm. And so those business owners are recognizing that there's an untapped market in South County um, that they can, they can advertise for um, and try to reach. And that they find that the chamber, being a part of the chamber, is helpful to that. Also, I want to continue <clears throat> the educational nature and the, the support that we provide to business owners um, for their marketing, 
um, through the business directory. Um, and the educational in the business after hours mixer, meeting other business owners, providing educational workshops on the new health care reform, on employee relations. Um, we have them on all different topics. You are a guest speaker bringing to us the Volt program and what you do to provide support to small business and minority business owners. So those three key areas are somewhere that we are working toward enhancing, developing, and expanding. That's good to hear. Now I'm going to ask you all the same question um, because I know you're in different fields. Um, Phil, what's your uh, vision for 2014? I, I think it's, I was just having a conversation today, this morning, mm -hmm. with uh, someone about 2014 and how um, there's so many possibilities. I think that mm -hmm. right now uh, there's this new wave of, of entrepreneurs coming about, this 21st century mindset uh, of leadership and even as young as high school students that are now realizing that um, as controversial as it may seem that college might not be the best route for them um, and instead of maybe just becoming a trades tradesman or tradeswoman they're looking at other ways to uh, create wealth for themselves and create happiness for themselves so I think that in 2014 that's where a lot of my personal focus is going to go towards helping the younger uh, people in, in the county and across the country really to just see that listen you don't have to get out of high school and then get a job that you don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much more that you can do. You just have to be committed. You have to be focused. You have to be vi uh, a visionary. You have to have passion. You know, you have to be driven. And, and you know, through 2014, that's one of the directions I'm, I'm definitely going to take uh, my life and, and, and push my business towards. Um, but I think overall, people are, again, they're realizing that there's different ways that some of the, the old school thinking might might be able to get things done. You know, it, it, you don't have to go the traditional route. And as more people realize that, then I think you're going to find a lot of new businesses come out. You're going to find a lot more home-based businesses come, come into the uh, forefront. And you're going to find a lot of traditional business owners take um, some of the strategies of direct sales companies uh, and, and really apply them towards, towards a success for their businesses. I'm affiliated with the Anne Arundel County Public Schools. They have a signature program. Mm -hmm. Each high school has its own theme. And um, you're someone who probably needs to get involved with the signature because they need, the schools need every bit of help that they can get from outside businesses. Um, but often they don't know how to reach those businesses. So this signature program is, is I've been involved for like four years and um, it, it's evolving. And uh, I'll give you some more information Great. on that. I'd love that. Thank yeah. you. Um, there's also another group in the construction industry that's rethinking how we train workers, mm -hmm. how we get more people in the construction industry. So we, you and I should probably talk about that for too sure. later. Lucia, give us your thoughts on your vision for 2014. Vision. <clears throat> vision is something that I didn't really take into consideration until I met Phil. I think I was really involved in being present in the moment and didn't think too far ahead. But it's exciting for me to think, wow, I'm going to have another year, you know, the possibility of expanding and growing. When I, um, when I thought about vision and what it could be for me in 2014, I really started to get into evolving my business, change. What can I do to be beyond basic in my company? I, th I feel that consumers nowadays are not looking for just a cleaning company. They're not looking for someone to just come in and do the basics. So mm -hmm. my vision for 2014 is being becoming a unique company, really going above and beyond, doing those things that where both parties are really not able to stay home anymore. They have to be out working with the way that the econ economy is, and they don't have time to do a lot of stuff in their home. So I'm excited about the possibility of giving my consumers, my customers, a whole different type of clean, something that can really help them and their household and their families to give them more time at home as opposed to spending their time after a long day at work and dealing with the kids, having to pick up and clean up. We can do all of that for them. I think that's a great vision. 
Um, you and I had talked earlier about uh, community involvement. Uh, I started the Christmas in April program back in the 90s with Claire Malakot uh, mm -hmm. of South County. And um, it, it's such a close-knit community, as you were saying. Just tell us a little bit more about the things that you're doing with the elderly. Whenever an elderly customer calls, normally a family member will call for them. There's a lot of things that we have to deal with as far as being attentive to their needs. Um, I enjoy being able to help people. And when we have um, an elderly person call, we really take the time to go in the home, sit down with them, be patient, talk about their needs, not make them feel that they're not able to do those things in their home, but to step up and to feel close to them, like family, let them know that we're gonna take care of everything. Let them know that through communication, that's key in business. Whatever they need, we're going to be there to help them and to take care of them. And without them knowing, we give them a great discount. <laughs> <laughs> because we understand that a lot of elderly are living off of, mm -hmm. you know, the money that they have saved or plans and things like that. And they don't want to have to worry about their future. So I feel that it's so great that we're as big as we are. We have over 300 customers that we have the opportunity to be able to go a little above and beyond and to give back to the elderly in our community who have been just like Claire. She was huge in the community. She really did a lot. And so for those people that have lived in South County for all of their lives, have seen it change and evolve, a lot of people probably don't want to have to deal with new companies, but mm -hmm. they come to me open and we treat them like family. We treat them as if we are, we've been a company that's been there as long as they have, and we really go above and beyond to make them feel comfortable. Well, we're certainly glad to hear that the elderly um, are my heart, and I think lots of folks now are focusing in on providing services to that segment of the community. Well, as we close out this segment of our show, what recommendations or words of advice would you give entrepreneurs interested in starting a business today? I would say tap into successful business owners as mentors, very similar to what Lucia has done with Phil. Um, they will be able to provide you um, some insight on what it takes to be a successful business, and they will be your supporters, but they will also have resources around them that can help you. So if you need a competent financial person, they can say, I know one, mm -hmm. talk to so-and-so, mm -hmm. talk to this person providing that support and resources. Now, you own your own business, or you're a partner in your business. Yes. What would you say have been your greatest challenge as a, a female and as a prospective business owner? As a female, my industry is probably 80% men. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and the demographics are, they're older too. Mm -hmm. So being a female in the industry, you don't get the respect that the men give you um, that are your equals, your co-equals in the industry. It's not stopped me. I went to an all-girls school. And so girls mm -hmm. were smart at everything. <laughs> and, and so it doesn't phase me. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the women in the industry have been very supportive. My husband's employer had a simple plan. Mm -hmm. And it was, and, um, I can't remember her name, Stacy, was also a female in the industry. And when I was going through school as a middle-aged woman, mm -hmm. Stacy was there to help me and, and be a, a support for me while I was going through this. And even now, when my husband sees her on an occasion, she asks about me. Um, and so that, having that support among the women in the industry is, is very, it's very nice. It's a lot easier to work with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to give to Phil. Phil, um, what recommendations or word of, words of advice would you want to give entrepreneurs today? I'd say three main things. First, be coachable, uh, stay open-minded, and beware of dream killers. You know, mm -hmm. you have to, you just heard about mentors, and that yes. is such an important thing. But a lot of times we get mentors and we're given advice from people that have already done it, that are already successful, and then we reinvent the wheel in our uh, application. Mm -hmm. I would advise people not to do that. You know, if you find somebody that is doing 
uh, what you want to do or is where you want to be. Don't, I'm not saying don't put your own spin on things, but I am saying stick to that system. They obviously have a system that works. So stick to your mentor's system, be as coachable as you can, uh, and, and focus on achieving your goals. Uh, in addition to being coachable, stay open-minded. A lot of times when we get focused on one thing, uh, we get gifts given to us, but we don't have the, the, the vision to see that there are new and additional gifts being given to us. So stay open-minded, stay, stay focused on your path, but at the same time, be aware that you may be getting led into a completely different path that's gonna be better for you in the long run. Uh, and then beware of dream killers. You know, it's not typical to be an entrepreneur. That mm -hmm. is not the path that pretty much anyone is taught. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand that whether your loved ones or your friends or you know associates you may run across, they, whether they in, intend to do it or not, a lot of folks are gonna look to hold you back. A lot of folks are gonna tell you that you can't do it. It's not for you, you're not one of those people, you know, or we are not the successful type or things like that. You are who you want to be. You are who you decide to be. Uh, Mario Andretti was asked, what's the number one uh, piece of advice you can give for any new race car driver? And he said, don't look at the wall because where your eyes go, <laughs> the car goes. So it's the same thing for any entrepreneur. You know, don't look at the wall, stay focused, keep your vision set because when you do that, no matter who's around you, you have tunnel vision and mm -hmm. you're going to get where you want to go. There's gonna be seasons, you'll hit ups and downs, but understand that's part of you developing and growing the mindset you need to live out the goal that you set. My biggest frustration as a consultant was that they wouldn't listen to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could pay you all this money to, to give them advice, and then it was like, I'm not going to really follow that, yeah. uh, that line of thinking. So I, uh, I sympathize with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Lucia, um, what words of advice would you give small businesses today? I feel that if someone came to me and asked and told me that they were going to start a business, um, the majority of the people would probably say, don't do it. Mm -hmm. But you can't let society dictate your future. If you have a drive or a passion and you need to do something, you just simply have to get up and do it. Don't be afraid of failure. Failure will lead you to success. Failure and mistakes are going to teach you. They're going to help you learn. I think you just ultimately have to have that drive and that passion every day to just do it over and over and over again. For me, it was more that I knew that the possibilities of owning your own business were endless. You didn't have a cap. The more that you gave, the more that you put in, the more that you were gonna get out of it. So for anyone that wanted to start a new business, that wants to start in, a, in their own business, I would have to say to them to just do it. You know, don't think twice, don't listen to what other people are going to say to you. Get involved with places like the Chamber of Commerce. They're gonna be there for you to help you. There's a local business in my shopping center where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, uh, his name is Joseph Tucker, he owns JT Restorations and he's owned it ever since you know he was really young. I go to him often, he's intimidating, but I go to him often for advice. He gives me great direction on where I need to go. So. If you are looking to be successful, find people that are successful. Don't ask you know, your neighbor that's working 12 hours a week, hey, what do you think about me starting mm -hmm. this business? They're not gonna give you the right direction. Go to someone that gets up every day, that makes a decision to do more, and follow their lead. And I think through that, you're not, you're not going to fail. You'll do great, just don't give up. Well, again, thank you, Lucia. Cindy and Phil for your insights and recommendations. Stay tuned to Channel 98 for the Minority Business Report, airing at one in five daily. If you have any comments or suggestions regarding this edition of the Minority Business Report, please contact me at the Office of Central Services in Annapolis on 410-222-7620. We are here working for you. Peace and blessings. Following bids are available from the Anne Arundel County Purchasing Office.